For this problem, a farmer wants to build a rectangular pen and then divide it, divide it into two interior fences. The total area to be 2,484 square feet. The exterior fence costs $18 per foot and the interior fence costs $16.50 per foot. Find the dimensions of the pen that will minimize the cost. From the diagram, the whole pen here in the rectangular shape, and there is the exterior fence, and the interior fence. Interior fence is in green, okay? The total area, that is the condition for this problem. I'm gonna make a list here. The total area gonna be 2484 square feet. We're gonna use that at some point. And then what else have we now? The exterior fence cost $18 per foot. That means the exterior, the one that in blue, The one in blue, I'm gonna write here, the one in blue, that's uh, the problem set $18 per foot. And the one in green, or the interior one, is gonna be just $16.50 per foot. Okay, for the total area, that is the area for the whole rectangle. The notation that provided by the problem, they use the y to represent the length and the x to represent the width. So I'm going to put the notation here. So this is going to be y and it's going to be x. If the whole length here is a y, this side is also y, and the opposite side, the x is also x. And then for the Measurement of the interior fence is also X because they are parallel. I'm gonna put the notation on my, my sub diagram here. For the outside, for the exterior fence, we have dimension here X, X, Y, Y. And for the interior, there are two of them, two interior fences. This one is X. Okay, now we're gonna set up the the relationship of the x and y from the total area, the area formula is x times y or the length times width. That means you have the relationship as uh, 2484 as a product of x and y. You can solve for y to write y in the form of the x. So we set it aside. So this is the condition that x and y related to each other with this um, expression. Now. We're gonna form the cost for each one of them. So I'm gonna write it out as the total cost would be the cost for cost of the exterior fence and the cost of the interior fence. Because the exterior fence is the outside rectangle. Like this is x, x, y, y. And the interior would be the two, two small ones inside. Since the exterior fence costs $18 per foot, so the cost is going to be $18 multiplied by two of the x size and plus two of the y size. And then the cost for the interior fence is $16.50. So $16.50 multiplied by, this is the X, this is the X, gonna be two X. Now I'm gonna simplify by using the notation C for the cost. So the cost is, so gonna be 36 X plus 36 Y plus 33 X. Now I can simplify C as, 69 times x 
plus 36 times y. I have the cos as the function of both x and y. Now I'm going to substitute y with the term x to get c as a function of x equals 69x plus 36 multiplied by 2484 divided by x. Okay, and then I'm going to use the calculator. Let's clean up here real quick. For that number that we have, uh, I'm gonna bring it back in a little bit. So we have 36 multiplied by uh, 2484. That number comes up to be um, 89,424. So I'm gonna sim simplify it as C of X equals 69 times X plus 89 or 24 divided by x as a cost function that depends on the x. So we're going to uh, work on the problem as we are finding the absolute max absolute min. For this case, we're going to look for the case at minimum of the cost, the minimum cost. Think about the value of the x and y value. For this case, x cannot be zero, so x can be greater than zero. And what else is the restriction that we have here? The, uh, the value, it looks like an open end. It could be anything, but the relationship x and y is provided as 2484 divided by x for the y value. So to find the absolute minimum, so you're gonna look at the critical number as step one. So find the C prime, the CX equals 69 minus 89,424 divided by X squared from finding the derivative of this term, which is 89,424 multiplied by X to the negative first. And then we're gonna use the power rule to obtain this derivative term. And then we're going to regroup them or write it in one fraction. 69 means 69 over 1. So multiply top and bottom by x squared. We have the common denominator, x squared. We have 69 x squared minus 89 for 24. And set to be 0. Next, we're going to solve for x. Solving the numerator. OK. I'll move on to the next slide here. So to solve for x, I'm going to add both sides by 89 for 24. So 89 for 24 is equals 69 x squared. That means my x squared equals 89 for 24 divided by 69. Let's see what number comes out. What's this number? divided by 69. So we have 1296. And then we take the square root of 1296. We ignore the negative sign because the dimension will not be a negative number. We're gonna take the square root. One, two, nine, six. To get the value 36. So we have x equals 36 as a critical number. I put a note here. This is my critical number. And after I get the critical number, I'm going to use it to find uh, the value y. So the y equals the condition for the x and y is 2484 divided by x is y. Put in the calculator. Two, four, eight, four divided by 36. And we get 69. Now we get the pair of the numbers as the dimensions 
x equals 36 and y equals 69. How do we know for sure these dimensions will provide you the minimum cost? We're going to use the second derivative test. Since we don't have the closed interval, the second derivative test, we're going to find the second derivative from the cost function that we found. Note that I'm going to put the note here for the C prime that we got in the form of uh, 69 <clears throat> minus 89424 and multiply by x to the negative second just for our convenience to find the derivative. So I find the derivative of the C prime to get C double prime. 69 gives us the derivative zero. The next one is negative 89424 multiplied by 2x, negative 2, sorry, two, negative 2 times x to the negative third and simplify to be uh, positive sign, the value 89, uh, 89424 multiplied by 2 to get the value 178848 multiplied by x to the negative third, or we write it as the number, which is the last number, divided by x to the third for x greater than zero because the restriction, the dimension must be positive or non-negative actually. So overall, the second derivative will tell you that it will come out as the quantity greater than zero for all x greater than zero. If the second derivative is positive, I'm happy. That means this critical number occurs within the concave up interval. I see the little dip there. So that's going to you that the critical value, the critical x will give the local minimum value, which is the minimum cost. So that's the guarantee by using the second derivative test. The problem asks for the dimensions. Let me check one more time. Dimension of 10 that minimize the cost, but doesn't ask for the cost, so we are done. So we do not have to go further. So the answer is 36 feet by 69 feet as the answer.